Well, I never had nothing. We never had anything. Nobody we knew had anything. So nobody had the word financial growth. Never, I never heard that. Guys in my neighborhood will come say, hey, Marcellus, can we come to your house so we can see what it's like to have a daddy? We would, I, mean, I don't even know how to explain like the horizon of aspiration in that area. When I graduated from high school, I got every grant, every money you could make just off of the, my father. Your daddy's making what? A year? So I never thought, but I always worked a job. So I always had money. From the time I was eight years old, my mom used to always make me laugh. She said, ooh, child, you work harder than me. Like I kept a job. I was cutting grass. I was working in a gas station. I worked in a sweet shop. I, would tell, I worked in a restaurant. And once I figured you could make money playing a, a trumpet, playing music, <laughs> man, I was, you realize you could come home from a gig and you would have like $25 from, and you didn't have to, you know how long it takes you to make $25 working in a gas station with Bossy Clay cussing you out? <laughs> he was working there for two weeks, three weeks. So I always, I also didn't spend a lot of money. So I, uh, I always worked. So I never had any point that I did not work in my life. And I would always tell my, my, my kids, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I like to, them, to make them make it on their own. I tell them, I have money, I could give you the money, but I'm not gonna do that. Because you got to make it. And when you have to make it, it makes you be inventive. Now, a lot of times with the loans and all of this scam, you know, and uh, it's part of what we need to change about our country, but we have to all be hungry about it. We don't like to stick with stuff. We don't like to do that. We like for everything to just, well, they're gonna take care, there's no they, they're not gonna take care of it. But my suggestion always is, yeah, if you can't eat, you can't survive, but you gotta hustle. And many times, if you've been hustling your whole life, you're willing to do stuff that somebody who ain't really hustling. You now, sometimes you plan, you're a dancer, you know, you'd be dancing or doing something physical, and you think, oh, this is exhausting. And then somebody else will come out there, and they'll be like, you tired, and they're warming up. People who play ball always experience that. <laughs> you think you're hustling, and then somebody who's hustling comes out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's, I mean, I know that's not, that's not advice, but it's just, yeah, you know, figure out how to combine what you want to do with your life with how to make some money. And if not, work on the side. Just keep chipping away at it. And I'm by nature was frugal. I never had nothing I really wanted to buy. Even to this day, I can't think, what do I really want to buy? I don't really want to buy nothing. And I never wanted to because I never had nothing. I never thought about, man, if I could get this kind of house, if I could get this car, or if I could have this suit, or if I could have this... I never really thought in those terms. So but one lesson I'm gonna leave you with, I know I'm giving you a long lesson. My daughter, my daddy, I had a contentious in my house, we didn't get along. My senior year, I really should have been out of my house. I shouldn't have been at home when I was 17. I was ready to go. And uh, when I, I had all my stuff in a box. I had some jeans, shirts, some tapes and stuff. So before I was leaving, when I graduated from high school, a week later I left. So I left triumphantly, like y'all are not ever going to see me again. <laughs> okay, you don't have to worry. I'm not ever coming back here. Y'all can kiss my... I didn't say that. That was before this era. So you didn't, you know, that could have resulted in some, some injuries. <laughs> <laughs> but my attitude was very much like, I can't wait to get out of here. And my daddy stopped me as I was walking out the door. He said, hey, man, is that your stuff? He was very upbeat and positive. Like he was, his vibe was, I'm glad you're leaving. He said, is that your stuff? I said, yeah, that's my stuff. He said, are you all right? I said, I'm all right. He said, what you got in the box? I said, I don't jeans. So, 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 so. He, said, he said, open the box. I, the box was taped. I was like, come on, man. He said, no, no, man. It's no. okay, man. I opened the box. I had a bunch of tapes of like everything from like Miles Davis Ricks to Mahler Symphonies, everything I had then on cassette tapes. We didn't have CDs and all that. And I had a boom box. So he counted like kind of stuff in it, boom boxes. He said, are you okay? He said, yeah, man, I'm all right. He said, you sure you're all right? Yeah, man, I'm all right. He said, okay. He said, okay, man, just remember, whatever happens to you in your life, you can go back to the contents of that box, and you're all right. There you go. So I always, when I have to cut my losses, because I did a lot of little dumb stuff out of it, it cost me money. Cut your losses. I'm not tied to anything. 
And a lot of it I trace back to kind of his attitude, but that was a profound lesson for me. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Okay, you all right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You got to believe in yourself too. Hustle. Yeah.